8. Boeing on a Barge In a bid to offer travelers something other than run-of-the-mill hotel accommodations, Irish entrepreneur David McGowan came up with the idea of building a transportation-themed luxury campground. He called it the Quirky Nights Glamping Village and chose the seaside town of Enniscrone as the perfect place to carry out his vision. McGowan, who's a funeral director by day, planned to turn a variety of vehicles into upscale hotel rooms for his guests, including train cars, boats, iconic black London taxi cabs, and even an airplane. In 2015, he bought a decommissioned Boeing 767 that once flew for the now-defunct Russian airline Transaero, but needed a new home after the company went out of business. The 159-foot-long aircraft would become the centerpiece of McGowan's campground, but getting it to the property was no easy feat. After the plane arrived at Shannon Airport in County Clare, employees removed its wings and loaded it onto a truck. From there, it was transported to a waiting barge on the Shannon Estuary, where it began the final 36-hour leg of its journey up the River Shannon. At the moment, it's unclear whether McGowan still plans to open a glamping village. There haven't been many updates on it since news of the plane's upriver journey went viral, and he hasn't mentioned the business on any of his public social media pages in quite some time. However, turning a commercial jet into an extravagant home away from home is a major undertaking, and perhaps it's still a work in progress. 7. The Death Railway the 258-mile-long Burma Railway runs between Ban Pong, Thailand and Thon Bu Zayat in southeastern Myanmar. It's a scenic route that has numerous river crossings and winds through the dense, hilly jungle. When the British first entertained the concept during the late 19th century, they decided it would be impossible. The idea was revisited during World War II by the Japanese who invaded Thailand in 1941 and forced the country into an alliance. Early the following year, Japan invaded Burma and seized control of it from the British. In 1942, Allied prisoners of war and captive civilian laborers were forced to build the Burma Railway, which quickly became known as the Death Railway, due to the enormous number of lives it claimed during its construction. It's estimated that over 12,000 of the 60,000 Allied POWs and roughly 90,000 civilian laborers who built the railroad died. They received inadequate food rations that were typically spoiled and contaminated with bugs and rodent droppings. The workers also lacked enough drinkable water, leaving them malnourished and dehydrated. Diseases like dysentery, cholera, and malaria ran rampant throughout the tropical environment, and medical care was scarce. Most of the Burmese section of the railroad fell into disrepair decades ago, but the Thai section continues to operate today. There are numerous memorial and pilgrimage sites along the railroad, including the Kanchanaburi War Cemetery, where 7,000 Allied POWs are buried. There's also the Hellfire Pass Memorial Museum and Walking Trail, which sees around 100,000 visitors every year. 6. El Blag Canal The water levels and elevation along modern-day Poland's 50-mile-long El Blag Canal varies steeply, leaving parts of it completely dry. During the 19th century, the King of Prussia began to wonder if there was a way to make it navigable for boats despite knowing that it would be impossible to do using a system of traditional locks. In 1825, the king turned to renowned German architect Georges Stink and asked him to come up with a solution. After nearly 20 years of planning, construction on Stink's experimental design finally began in 1844 and the canal was later opened in 1860. To overcome the inconsistencies in altitude and water levels, Stink employed a combination of locks and inclined planes. This enabled small boats to hitch a ride through the dry sections of the route on a rail-like car. The system can accommodate vessels a little over 80 feet long and weighing up to 55 tons. When a boat reaches a waterless stretch of the canal, 
it enters a cradle-like compartment on wheels, which carries it overland to the next section of water. Today, the canal is primarily a tourist attraction, giving visitors the option to ride along for the entire 11-hour journey, or hop on and off at certain points. It wasn't originally built for leisure, but was a shipping route, and it significantly decreased the amount of time it took to transport goods between the two regions that it connects. When it first opened, the canal was considered an amazing feat of engineering, and it continues to fascinate today. 5. Wuppertal Schwebebahn Monorails offer a convenient and quick way to get from one place to another, enabling commuters and travelers to bypass traffic, red lights, and other things that tend to slow people down on the road. Japan has the highest number of monorails in the world, but as urban populations grow and traffic congestion worsens, many cities and regions around the world have implemented and expanded their own monorail systems in recent years. While most of these systems look similar to a traditional elevated railway, some monorails are suspended from their track rather than on top of it. The oldest suspended monorail that's still in operation today is the Wuppertal Schwebebahn in Germany. Designed in the late 19th century, it was built in the city of Wuppertal after several other cities rejected the concept, including Berlin and Munich. Today, it continues to transport passengers along the same 8.3-mile loop that it offered to its first riders in 1901. Since then, numerous suspended monorails have popped up in various places throughout the world. The longest is the 9.4-mile-long Chiba Urban Monorail in Japan. Located east of Tokyo on the island of Honshu, it services 18 stations and consists of two main lines. Suspended monorails aren't a popular form of travel, but the existing systems seem to serve their populations well. Have you ever traveled on a monorail? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. 4. The Railway to Heaven Spanning 970,000 square miles, the Tibetan Plateau is the world's highest and largest plateau above sea level. With an average elevation exceeding 14,800 feet, it's a place where mankind once thought it would be impossible to build a railway. Oxygen levels are about half of what they are at sea level, making altitude sickness not only a possibility, but almost a guarantee for anyone who isn't used to the elevation. This alone would pose severe hazards and complications to workers. However, a railway would serve as a vital connection between some of China's most populated urban centers and remote cities throughout the Tibetan Plateau, so authorities were determined to make it happen. To combat the oxygen shortage, pressurized chambers mimicking the oxygen content at sea level were placed along the route for workers who fell ill. Nicknamed the Railway to Heaven, the Qinghai Tibet Railway opened in 1984 and was expanded in 2006. Each passenger rail car that runs along the route today is equipped with its own oxygen supply system as well as oxygen masks. The train's engines are also turbocharged, giving them enough strength to power through the thin atmosphere. A large portion of the railroad is built on permafrost, and to prevent it from melting under the heat of the passing trains, the tracks are placed on elevated rock piles. This allows hot air to be dispersed by passing winds before it hits the ground. Along one stretch of the railroad, the ground is only frozen for part of the year, requiring a bridge to carry the train safely. Climate change could challenge the system's ability to continue operating in the future. But for now, experts are keeping a close eye on the conditions and doing everything possible to keep the railroad running while also protecting the environment. Altogether, the route consists of 675 bridges and 47 tunnels. The railway runs along the Tangula Pass, which is home to the world's highest rail station at 16,640 feet above sea level. In addition to transporting residents, the Qinghai Tibet Railway has become popular among tourists as a thrilling and low-cost way to see Tibet with a one-way ticket for a private sleeper cabin typically costing less than 200 US dollars. 3. 
The Falkirk Wheel, connecting Scotland's Forth and Clyde Canal with the Union Canal, has always been a complicated matter. Until 1933, a series of 11 locks linked the two canals together, and the journey took nearly an entire day. In the decades after the locks were dismantled, officials visited and revisited the idea of once again reconnecting the canals. Finally, in 2002, the Falkirk Wheel was opened and is still the world's only rotating boat lift today. The parts for the wheel were built and assembled in Derbyshire, England. They were then disassembled, transported to Falkirk, bolted together, and crane lifted into place. Over 1,000 construction workers were required for the project, and around 1,200 tons of steel were used to complete the wheel, along with more than 14,000 hand-tightened bolts. The 115-foot wheel is the equivalent height of eight double-decker buses stacked on top of each other. It consists of two gondolas that were designed based on a principle discovered by the ancient Greek engineer Archimedes, which states that floating objects displace their own weight in water. Therefore, the weight of the contents of each gondola are always the same, even if one is empty and the other contains a boat. For safety, the water levels are monitored by electric sensors to ensure they're equal. Powered by 10 hydraulic motors, the wheel transports the boats in each gondola to their respective canals in just four minutes. It can rotate both clockwise and counterclockwise. And the operator in the control room is responsible for rotating the lift in both directions equally to reduce wear on its bearings and other moving parts. During the rotation, the gondolas are kept in the upright position by a simple set of cogs. Perhaps the most amazing feature of the Falkirk wheel is its energy efficiency. Operating the wheel only requires the same amount of energy as boiling eight electric kettles, thanks to the principles of balance and equilibrium that its design was based on. 2. Pomben Bridge Opened in 1914, the Pomben Bridge connects Ramaswaram Island in the Palk Strait with the southern Indian mainland. It was India's first sea bridge, and until 2010, the country's longest, measuring nearly 1.3 miles from one end to the other. In one sense, the structure isn't very remarkable. It was built using conventional methods and sits on concrete piers that were sunk and secured into the seabed. However, it was a remarkable engineering feat for the time it was built, and it only took about three years to construct. It's fairly remarkable that the more than 100-year-old structure is still standing, especially in an environment with corrosive rough seas and heavy winds. The region is also prone to cyclones, and the bridge survived a particularly destructive storm in 1964. Midway through the bridge, there's a movable structure called a bascule, which raises to let ships and barges pass and then lowers back down allowing train traffic to resume as normal. Between 10 and 15 small boats pass through each month, according to the Economic Times. Due to its age, experts continuously monitor the Pamban Bridge in an effort to gauge its remaining lifespan. They base their predictions on various factors, including the extent of its corrosion. Until the opening of a road bridge in 1988, the Pamban Bridge was the only surface transport linking the island to the mainland. The existence of both bridges offers two different ways to reach the Ramanatha Swami Temple, which attracts hundreds of pilgrims on a daily basis. 1. The Channel The Channel Tunnel, famously nicknamed the Channel, is the world's longest underwater tunnel. It runs between Britain and France, connecting the United Kingdom to the mainland Europe via the English Channel. It measures 31 miles and consists of three tunnels, two of which are used for trains, and a third that serves as an emergency exit and a maintenance tunnel. Before the tunnel was completed in 1994, traveling between Britain and France involved a 90-minute ferry ride, despite the short distance between the two countries. Today, it enables more than 50,000 commuters and travelers to traverse the English Channel in just 35 minutes. Building the Channel Tunnel presented challenges from every fathomable angle.
from securing funding to acquiring experienced engineers and specialized tunnel boring machines. Skilled and unskilled workers also had to be hired and housed. Construction began simultaneously from both ends, with plans to meet in the middle. Tunnel boring machines burrowed through a layer of chalk underneath the channel while hauling the debris out on conveyor belts. On the British side, the debris, also known as spoil, was brought up to the surface using railroad wagons. On the French side, the spoil was mixed with water and pumped out through a pipeline. As progress was made, the tunnel was lined with concrete. Aligning the tunnels to meet in the middle was among the project's biggest challenges. Nobody knew for sure if it would work. The calculations were made using special surveying equipment and lasers. And from there on out, everyone hoped for the best. Thankfully, the two sides of the service tunnel were officially connected on December 1st, 1990. And it remains one of Europe's most vital transportation systems. Would you rather travel through the underwater channel or be transported on the Falkirk wheel? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.